Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, SpaceX is ready to launch again, Dreamliner AD requires a periodic computer reboot, DJI revises specs on its Inspire 2 drone. I'm Brie Cross, this is December 6, 2016, and this is Airborne Limited. SpaceX could return to flight by the middle of the month if the FAA approves its next launch, according to SpaceX customer Iridium Communications. Iridium CEO Matt Detch said in a news release that the company has remained confident in SpaceX's ability as a launch partner since it suffered a launch pad explosion at Cape Canaveral, Florida on September 1st. The launch is scheduled on December 16th at 12.36 p.m. Pacific Standard Time from Vandenberg Air Force Base in California, according to the Iridium News release. Gwen Shotwell, president and CEO of SpaceX, said, quote, We are looking forward to return to flight with the first Iridium Next launch. Iridium has been a great partner for nearly a decade, and we appreciate their working with us to put their first 10 Iridium Next satellites into orbit. An airworthiness directive issued by the FAA last week requires repetitive cycling of either the airplane electrical power or the power to the three flight control modules. This AD was prompted by a report indicating that all three flight control modules might simultaneously reset if continuously powered on for 22 days on all Boeing 787-8 and 787-9 airplanes. A reset of the flight control modules, if not corrected, could result in flight control services not moving in response to flight crew inputs and consequent temporary loss of controllability. The FAA considers this AD an interim action. Boeing and its suppliers are developing a permanent solution to address the identified unsafe condition. The Seattle Times reports that in a statement, Boeing said that the AD addresses an issue that had already been brought to the attention of Dreamliner operators. The company says a permanent software fix is anticipated in the second quarter of 2017. After the break, DJI slows down to get better camera images. Explore No Limits Flying in the FAA Certified Sea Ray Amphibious LSA. One of the top three best-selling LSAs in the U.S., Progressive Aerodyne Sea Ray comes equipped with a Rotax engine and exhibits extraordinary handling on land, water, and in the air. Check it out at www.searay.com. Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115-horsepower turbocharged airplane at AirplaneFactory.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Limited, Aero TV, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. DJI has reduced the top speed of its new Inspire 2 drone due to concerns about the quality of the video captured by the aircraft. In a notice posted on its website, DJI said that when the drone was launched, the Inspire 2 drone was expected to accelerate to 50 miles per hour in 4 seconds and reach a top speed of 67 miles per hour. After further optimization and testing of various components of the craft, gimbal, and propulsion system, DJI engineers have revised these specifications. The Inspire 2 is now expected to accelerate to 50 miles per hour in 5 seconds and reach a top speed of 58 miles per hour. These changes are necessary to ensure speed does not compromise video quality and stability. DJI says any customers who have pre-ordered an Inspire 2 but no longer wish to purchase one will be able to request a full refund from DJI and its authorized resellers. Every Tuesday, we usually look ahead at some of the more interesting events in the aviation universe. But to be honest, as winter approaches and the holiday season is just around the corner, air events get few and far between. 
However, that doesn't mean there aren't places to go and things to see. Here is this week's Arrow Calendar. Our first event is a Zenith hands-on kit aircraft building workshop being held at the Zenith factory in Mexico, Missouri on Thursday and Friday, December 8th and 9th. You're invited to participate at a workshop to learn all about building and flying your own Zenith aircraft kit. The workshops are coordinated by the Zenith aircraft staff and held right in the factory. You don't need any experience, skills, or tools to attend. Another way to learn about building your own airplane is to attend one of EAA Sport Air Workshops. A two-day event is being held at the Aviation Institute of Maintenance in Houston, Texas on December 10th and 11th. In this workshop, you have a choice of receiving hands-on training and practice in the skills of airplane fabric covering, sheet metal basics, composite construction, and gas welding. It's all real-world stuff and EAA provides all the equipment. Now let's take a look at a great aviation museum, the National Museum of the U.S. Air Force, located at the Wright-Patterson Air Force Base near Dayton, Ohio, is one of the greatest in the country. Their galleries present military aviation history, boasting more than 360 aerospace vehicles and missiles on display, many rare and one-of-a-kind, along with thousands of historical items and powerful sensory exhibits. Be sure to check out the museum on their website before you go so you can plan your visit. There is so much to see. We'll be bringing you more information about some of the great places to visit as our Aero calendar works its way through the winter months. Hang in there, the air shows will be back. After these messages, General Aviation Manufacturers Association welcomes modernization of EASA regulations. The dream is real. A truly affordable personal jet aircraft. The Subsonics Personal Jet Kit is priced at only $42,000. Kit Plus Engine is still under $100K. Add instruments, upholstery, and paint, and you're flying. It's time to put your money where your bucket list is. Learn more at sonicsaircraft.com. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. The Bristel Light Sport Aircraft is what you are looking for. The Bristel is wider than a Cirrus, faster than a Skyhawk, offers more storage than a Husky, and comes standard with Garmin Avionics. So what are you waiting for? Visit Bristel.com to find out how you can get into a Bristel today. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro tso Airspeed, Attitude, Altitude, and Slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Transport ministers from across the European Union's member states reached an agreement on modernization of the European Aviation Safety Agency regulations. The agreement promotes negotiations among the European Parliament, EU member states, and the European Commission to agree on a final text. Five instructors have renewed their master instructor designations in the month of November. They are Ken Whittakin, Jr. of Burnett, Texas, Todd Underwood of Prescott, Arizona, Brian Robbins of Columbus, New Jersey, Bill Gregory of Gilbert, Arizona, and Ken Fukuyama of Centennial, Colorado. Spirit Aero Systems celebrated delivering the first 737 MAX thrust reverser with the new composite inner wall to the flight test program. Spirit also opened a new expansion to support 737 MAX thrust reverser production as Boeing ups the production rate on the 737 aircraft. The Civil Aviation Authority of Bolivia has suspended operating authority for La Mia Airline after an Avro RJ-85 jet went down in Colombia, resulting in the fatal injury of 71 of the 77 people on board. Unsubstantiated reports indicated that the aircraft ran out of fuel. The North American-based company Flying Colors has completed its first installations of the SATCOM Direct Router. The first was fitted as part of a Bombardier Global 5000 cabin refurbishment package, and the second was a new Global 5000 completion project. Well, that's the trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. The CAF Red Tail Squadron Tuskegee Airmen P-51C Mustang is airborne again. It was restored by Air Corps Aviation, who are specialists in the restoration, maintenance, and rebuilding of vintage World War II aircraft. 
The aircraft had been out of commission for eight months to undergo repair following a hard landing. The aircraft is expected to return shortly to its mission to honor the history and legacy of the Tuskegee Airmen at air shows and events around the country. Doug Rosendahl, one of the founders of the CAF Red Tail Squadron, piloted the aircraft and said, quote, there were no issues with the test flight and the aircraft flew great. We can now get the P-51 back up in the air where it belongs, inspiring young people to rise above adversity, just like the Tuskegee Airmen. The CAF Red Tail Squadron is a volunteer-driven organization dedicated to educating audiences across the country about the history and legacy of the Tuskegee Airmen, America's first black military pilots, and their support personnel. The restored aircraft will be active during the 2017 airshow schedule. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. We'll see you tomorrow.